All right, recording. So the first part is how to convert from rectangular to polar, right? This is pretty simple. This is pretty simple. Only when, uh, no, let me start again. This is pretty simple in some cases, in some cases. We don't even have to use formulas or calculators for this in some cases, all right? The first, the, the first step is to begin always by plotting the point, right? In some cases, in most of the cases, you can clearly see the polar coordinate without having to use calculators, without having to even do math or calculations in your head or in, in, in the notebook. Nothing at all, just by looking, just by looking, right? So the first step is to plot the points, all right? We're going to begin with that example. Here is the first example. Find polar coordinates of a point whose rectangular coordinates are these, right? So I'm giving you the rectangular, guys. I'm giving you rectangular coordinates. And I'm asking you to find polar. Remember polar coordinates? Polar coordinates are these ones. R comma theta, right? These are the polar coordinates. So I'm giving you x comma y, and I want you to find R comma theta, right? So again, first step, plot the point, right? So we're going to plot the points, and we're going to see where the point is located. Here is a graph of the point. I took this graph from um, GeoGebra, GeoGebra, which is online, right? So since these are rectangular coordinates, this is the point X and this is the point Y, right? This 0, X, 0, 3, 0 is for X and 3 is for Y. So we have 0 in X, 3 in Y there. That is the location of the point, right? That is the location of the point. Beautiful. Now, we can find from the drawing, we can find the values R and theta without having to use any formulas. Any calculations? Nothing. Just by looking. Just by looking. Let's start with the simplest part. What did you guys think is the elevation here? Let me do a drawing. 90 degrees. All right. This guy is good. This guy is good. This guy is good. But why did you know that? Why, why, why did you think so? I'm talking about this angle, right? This is the angle of elevation. Remember, this is the theta, right? And this line right here, this line is the R, right? All right, how did you know that angle is 90 degrees? Or why did you think so? Everybody, anybody in the chat, please, or open the mic, or just give me an, just give me an idea, please. Why did you feel like that angle is 90 degrees? Or is because it not 90 two degrees? Two perpendicular lines. Juan Camilo, you are correct. Yes. In the Cartesian plane, both lines are perpendicular. In other words, this angle is 90 degrees. 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 Every single one of those is 90 degrees, which is why we say that the circumference is 360. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. 360. Right? All right. So look at that. In this exercise, we are changing from rectangular into polar. And we already know this angle is 90 degrees. We already know that from the start without having to use a calculator or without even having to draw or write anything in the notebook, nothing at all. Just by looking at the drawing, just by looking at the graph, we know this angle is 90 degrees. Right? Cool. But what about the R? In other words, the measure, the measure of the line. The measure of that line. How True. much is that line? Anybody? Three. Three. All right, cool. Who said that? <laughs> Juan Camilo. All right, cool, Juan okay. The line is three as well. Yes, the line is three. Why is the line three? Let me write it here. Why is the line three? It could be three centimeters, three millimeters, three, three little squares, three whatever. We don't care about the units in here. We care about the units in, in the angles, right? This is degrees. But we don't care about the units in the R. 
But what do we know this is three? Look, again, the measure from the center to the line, to, to the point, right? So you can see that is a tree, right? You can, you, see, you can count this. One, two, three. Three units. For this exercise, this exercise was so simple that just by looking at the point, we were able to find the measurements R and the measurements theta. Just by looking. Just by looking. Look at this. The second step, we need to determine the distance R. This is the distance R from the center to the point. That is R. And we can count so we know R equals 3. Third step, try to find the theta, the angle of elevation. And again, just by looking at the angle, we know this is 90, 90 degrees. Just by looking at the figure, again, look at the plot. Look at the Cartesian plane here. That is the angle. That's 90 degrees. In this exercise, we didn't even have to do anything at all. We just needed to look at the drawing. Theta equals 90. Now that we have our r and our theta, right? the measurement and the degrees. All we have to do is write down the answer and here is how you write it. Parenthesis R comma theta parenthesis, three comma 90 degrees. That's it. That is it, the guys, that is it. We did it. We solved the exercise. It's that simple. All right. If it's that simple, let's give another one a try. Can you help me with these guys? Tell me with this, please. Just, just give me, give me a chance, right? Forget about this one. We're not doing this one anymore, right? Forget about this point. This one doesn't exist. Forget about this one. Can you help me with this? Here. There is the point, right there. All right, in the chat, please. In the chat, everybody, give everybody a chance. Don't, don't open the mic so that nobody else knows. Just give it a chance in the, in the chat. Can you help me with this? These are x, comma, y. These are regular coordinates, right? They're rectangular coordinates. The rectangular coordinates will be negative 4, comma, 0. But I am looking for r, comma, theta. I am looking for these ones. Can you help me with this, r, comma, theta? Can you help me? In the chat, please. Just, just go ahead and give it, give it a try in the chat. Write it in the chat, please. Don't forget about the degrees for the degrees, right? Otherwise, you are using radians. If you cannot do the little circle to, to, to show degrees, just write the word degrees. It's fine. Just write degrees. Okay, we have a lot of answers. Cool, cool. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine answers. All right, we have a lot of more people, a lot more people than... 20, 25 people. So please, everybody, please, everybody, give it a chance. Everybody. I want to see everybody write it in the chat. Please. I am not going to read the answers. I am not going to say, hey, Juliana, you did it right, you did it wrong. I'm not going to say so. I'm not going to say so. so. Just give it a try. Give it your best. Maybe you are right. Maybe you are wrong. It doesn't matter. Just, just give it a try. All right, let's see. Mm. I'm going to start calling people out because I don't see you working here. For example, Javi, write your answer in the chat, please. Mm. I need to see you guys. I need to see you. She absent? Nata, all right. I was going to say Nata. I was going to say Nata. Let's use this as an assistance today. Ah, 
Jade. Are you present? Are you with us, Jade? Jade. Do you, do you have difficulties with the internet? Are you connected but away from the keyboard? From the keyboard? Ade. No, teacher, aquí estoy. Oh, hi, Jade. How you doing? Jade, please. Everybody else did it in the chat. You are the one missing. Write down your answer. Nata, Juan Andrés, Vale, Tatis, César, Lau, Marino. Uh -huh. Yeah, Jale, you're the only one missing. You don't want to practice? What's, what's going on, Jale? Some people have double answers. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Hadi. All right. So we're doing this point over here, right? We're doing this point over here. All right. So how do you do this exercise? Again, sometimes some exercises can be done just by looking, just by looking. So we're going to do that. We're just going to look. How about this angle? How much is this angle? Because that is the angle of elevation. This is the theta, right? Okay, well, this angle, this angle is 180, 180 degrees. Then forget about the circle for degrees. All right, that angle is 180 degrees. Cool, pretty good, pretty good, cool. Pretty simple, but what about this? What about red? Uh, what about this line? What is this? What is the measure of this line? Paso un momentico al español porque les ha pasado a varias personas en otros cursos. Mis niños, pensemos un momentico en lo siguiente. Cuando medimos cualquier tipo de medida, por ejemplo, cuando hay que medir, no sé, alguna cancha para mirar si cumple las regular, la regularidades de cualquier cancha de fútbol, ¿no? o de básquetbol, la que sea, para mirar que no sea más grande. De pronto la distancia desde el punto penal hasta el arco es muy chiquita, o muy alta, muy larga, de pronto hasta el centro, no sé. Si queremos verificar eso, medimos, ¿verdad? Sacamos un, me una, uh, un metro y medimos. ¿Alguna vez les han dado una medida negativa, muchachos? Es porque el metro no tiene medidas negativas, ¿cierto? El metro mide en positivos. Mide 15 metros o 5 metros o lo que sea que tú midas. Mide tanto metro positivo. Esto no es diferente. No se trata de mirar cuál es el numerito en donde termina el punto. No, se trata de medir. Y como medidas, las medidas siempre serán positivas. Anótelo por ahí en algún lado. Measurements are always going to be positive. We can count one, two, Three and four. This is four units. Sure, it's in the negatives. Sure, you are counting to the left. Sure, these are negative numbers. Sure. But the measurement is four. You don't see the signs when you talk about negatives. You don't see the signs. Measurements are always going to be positive. Measurements are always going to be positive. So the value R here is going to be 4. Now, remember, you can also say when we talk about polar coordinates, let me write the answer here. Well, let me just write the answer here. The answer will be 4,180 degrees. 
I am sorry uh, to write like this. I am writing the, I am using the mouse <laughs> to write. So it is difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like you understand the answer, right? 4, 180 degrees. But look at this. Look at this, please, guys. Look at this. If you were to say that the answer is negative 4, that is also valuable. That is valuable as well. But remember, when we, when we talk, when we are talking about polar coordinates, any negative, even in the R or in the theta, negative values mean means to go in the opposite direction. So you don't have to go like that. You would have to go like that. If you say this is negative four, you would have to go like that. All right? You would have to go like that. And that's not the point, right? It's this one. So that's another reason why this happens. That's another reason why this happens. All right. Now, let me raise this. All right. Can you help me with this one now? Let's erase all of this. Can you help me with this one? Let's see how many of you can do it in less than two minutes. Let's see how many of you can do it in less than two minutes. It's one that is absolutely easy. Again, Forget, forget about this one. Forget about this one. We're not talking about this one, right? We are not talking about this one. Can you help me with this point? What is the polar coordinate of this point, guys? Can you help me with that one? In the chat, please. Again, all you have to do is look. All you have to do is look. Let's count, let's count two minutes and see how many of you can do it in less than two minutes. Okay, we we right. Oof, man, we have two answers already. All right, you guys are pretty good. You guys are pretty fast. All right, man, a lot of you are doing this in less than two minutes. All right, all right, guys. Remember, you don't learn math by waiting for everybody else and then copying the answer. You don't learn math by waiting for the answer of your teacher. That is not how you study math. That's not how you learn. Do you want to get more, do you want to get good at math? Do you want to finally finally pass math? Finally say, "Teacher, I understand." Just is that what you want to do? Then you have to try and you have to make mistakes. Write whatever you think is the answer. If it is wrong, then it is wrong. I'm not going to read the answer. Nobody's going to know. But you have to give it a try. You have to give it a try. All right, we have 14 people answering now. 16, all right, but there are 25 in the chat. Who's the one who's not answering now? 17 people now, all right, 20 people. You have to give it a try, guys, please. Thank you, Aleha. Everybody, give it a try. Give it a try. 22. There are three people missing. There are three people missing. Now, two minutes are done. You need to take a look, guys. You need to look at the drawing and try it. Otherwise, I'm going to feel like, I don't know, I'm just wasting my time, right? If you don't give it a try, then we're not studying math here. Lau, is that a blanket? Yes? <laughs> okay. All right, let's take a look at the answers. Let's take a look at the answers. Uh, looks like everybody is correct. We have one person who is thinking differently. All right. Pretty good, Alba, pretty good. Uh, yes, that's it. A lot of people are saying the same answer. 1, 270. Beautiful. Let's take a look at this again. Begin by doing the angle, and the angle of elevation is going to be this one over here. So this is 90 plus 90 plus another 90. That is 270 degrees. All right, 270 degrees. Beautiful. How about the measure, the R? This is theta, right? This is theta. How about the measure for R? All right, this is going to be the measure for R. One. That is the value of theta, of, of r, sorry, theta, of r. In other words, the polar coordinates of this point will be 1, 270 degrees. Do not forget about the little ball on top of the, of the number. That, that ball shows that the angle is in degrees. 
Congratulations to everybody because everybody got it correctly. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. Now, some of you forgot about the little circle for degrees. Some of you forgot about that. It's okay. I feel like you can practice, right? The more you practice, the better you are going to get at this. Mister, I have a question. Yes, sir. It cannot be also negative 190 degrees. It can, no, no, degrees. no, no. It can be also. Did you see what I did there, Alba? Did you see what I did there? No? Yeah, me, sir. Because you asked me a negative question, right? So I have to answer no to say it was correct. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> Alba, you are correct, brother. You are correct. This is one answer, but take a look at these guys. Take a look at this. What if instead of taking the angle positive, we do this? A negative angle. That can be as well. This is negative 90 degrees. That can be as well. That could happen. That is correct. Again, the measure for the R is all is just going to be 1. So another possibility is 1, negative 90 degrees. That's another possibility. That is correct. But what about this one? Take a look at these guys. Take a look at this. What about this? Look at that. What if we say the angle is just 90 degrees? Now, that would be a mistake, right? Because clearly, the point is down, not up. The point is down. So that would be a mistake. Is it? Because maybe you re remember that if you look at the point in the opposite direction, man, sorry, sorry about that. If you look at the point in the opposite direction, like that, in the opposite direction, then all you have to do is write the, ne the measurement as negative. The R here could be negative one. Because it's the same measure, R, but in the opposite direction from where the point is. The point is down, so I'll just count it up. This is also a perfect way of looking at this, negative 1, 90 degrees. There are a ton, a ton of ways of writing uh, polar coordinates, a ton. I'm choosing to uh, teach you the easiest, but if you want to do any of those, that is just correct. That is just fine. Finally, let's do it with one minute now, because I feel like the more you practice, the better you get at this. Let's see how many of you can do this one in less than one minute. You guys ready? Can you help me with this point, guys? Please find the polar coordinates of this point over here. The blue one. I that one. Can you help me with that point? Is it one minute, all right? So we are going to count from now on. One minute. Let's see if we can get the 25 people to answer this time. Fifteen seconds. All right, let's see. Let's see. We have fifteen answers already. Fifteen answers. We need ten more. We need ten more. All right, there you are. All right. Almost there, guys. We need the twenty-five people to answer in less than one minute. Can we do it? Is nine B gonna be able to do that? All right, let's see. Let's see. Twenty-two answers. We are missing three people. Three people. We are missing three people. And 10 seconds. Two people. We're missing two people now. Thank you, Nata. Two people. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Unfortunately, we were not able to finish all of us in, two, in one minute, but 23 of you did it. And guess what? The answer is just correct. Alba, as usual, thinking outside the box. Pretty good, Alba. Pretty good. Lao as well, thinking outside the box. All right. The rest of you guys, every single one of you are correct. Beautiful. Beautiful, guys. Let's take a look at this one. All right. The usual way, right? The usual way. Point is here, so angle of elevation will be 360 degrees. 360 degrees, right? That is the usual way. Now, for the 
measurement of the line. This is the line, right? This is the line. That is That measures two, so that equals R. In other words, let me write down here the, the solutions. This is two comma 360 degrees. All right, that is one solution. Another possible solution, take a look at this, take a look at this. Let's think about the angle of elevation. What if instead of elevating 360, so a full circle, what if instead of doing that, we just don't elevate at all? There is no elevation. There's no elevation. The angle is zero degrees. That is possible as well. Any point on the x-axis, on this part of the x-axis, you could say that the elevation is just zero. There's no elevation. <laughs> the point is right there. It's no elevation. So this is possible as well. In other words, you can have 2 comma 0 degrees. Or 0 radians, right? Doesn't matter. How about this possibility? Did you think about this one? Just 180. 180 degrees. But that, we, I'm sorry, but that would make it as the point is located in this line, right? We don't want that. We want the point to be on the opposite. Man, opposite. That means we could have an angle of 180 degrees. But we need to remember that the measurement is negative. This is also possible. Following that, following that, you could also do this, 180, but negative 180, negative 180. You could also do that. The point would be negative 2, comma, negative 180. Huh? Which of these are you going to write? Number one, number two, number three, or number four? Any of those is good. Just choose the one that you feel is most, is the most, is the easiest, and do that one. It doesn't really matter. All right, guys. Congratulations. That is the easiest part. That is the easiest. That is the easiest. How to find rectangle, uh, polar coordinates when the point is in an axis? Look at this. The point is not in play in in quadrant one or quadrant two. This point is exactly in the middle between quadrant one and quadrant two. So the point is in an axis. When the points are in axis, the exercise is pretty simple. The exercise is pretty simple. But let's take a look at this example now. Find the polar coordinates of a point whose rectangular coordinates are 2, comma, negative 2. 2, comma, negative 2. As usual, step number one, plot the point. So we take our plot, right, our Cartesian plane, and we plot the point. This is x and this is y. 2 for x, negative 2 for y. There it is. That's the point. This point is not in an axis. This point is in a quadrant. Can you tell me what is the name of that quadrant, please? In the shed, anybody. That's pretty easy, right? Quadrant number four. Yes, correct, guys. This is quadrant number four. Num number four. In this case, things are gonna change. When the points are in quadrants, we do have to use some formulas. We do have to use our calculator. Let's begin by using the first formula. Let's find the distance r. We're going to begin by using by finding r first. And this is the formula right here. I don't know, maybe some of you can recognize this distance, this formula, as the distance formula. Right? Maybe you guys saw it from physics or from, I don't know, whatever other subject. This is formula right there. r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Right? Now, how did you use that formula? How? Ah, uh, by the way, remember, this is the line R, right? This is the one we are looking for, R. How did you do that? Like this. You are simply going to replace the values of X and Y that we have in our uh, rectangular coordinates. X equals 2, 
y equals negative 2. There it is. We just replace the values. Remember, since we are using a negative number, we are replacing with a negative number, we need to replace using parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator will give us mistakes. And you guys are going to say, but teacher, that is what the calculator gave me. Yeah, but you didn't write it correctly, right? Use parentheses whenever you replace with negative numbers. If you put this in the calculator, you will see that the answer is square root of 8. You can even simplify this as 2 square root of 2. We saw this, right? We saw this in the first term. But let's say you don't like the square root of 8 or you don't like the simplification. All right, we, you can just write down the, um, the round number. The round number. Now, if my calculations are correct, 2 square root of 2 is around 2.8, maybe. Can anybody do this in the calculator, please, and tell me if I am right or I am wrong? I feel like that is 2.8. How much is that, the square root of 8? Thank you, Castro. Thank you, brother. Yes, 2.8. All right, so you can do this one, you can do this one, or you can do this one. Which one? Whatever you choose. Whatever you choose, just make sure you are rounding properly. Remember, round is not just look at the first decimal. No, no, no. You have to see if the first decimal goes up or stays the same, right? That is what it means to round. All right. So congratulations, we found the distance R. But what are we going to do about theta? Determine theta. This is the angle theta, right? This is the angle theta. Now, I am choosing to do it negative because I feel like it is the easiest. This is a, this is a small angle. You can do it like that if you want to. Or you can just do the whole circle. Any of those two is going to be good. I choose to do this one negative. Why do you know this is negative? Because look at the drawing. Look at the direction of my little arrow. The little arrow goes down. Right? In angles, if the little arrow goes down, that is going clockwise. So the angle is negative. So I don't know what is this. I don't know what is this, but I know the angle is negative. Right? I know the angle is negative. But how are we going to find the angle? Simple. We are going to take advantage of this little formula, the one in red. This is the formula. Right? This is the formula. Now, how did you get to this place? Simple. By taking advantage of what so katoa teaches the toa part remember the toa the tangent this is tangent opposite over adjacent this is the toa right and if we do that here in the triangle take a look at this take a look at this this is good mathematics for the people who love mathematics look at this look at this take a look at this triangle pim 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 right take a look at that triangle this is 90 degrees Right, this is 90 degrees. Hey, Marino, you were sleeping and now I feel like you are interested. Cool. Take a look at this, right? This is 90 degrees. This is the hypotenuse, right? Now, for this angle, for theta, this is the opposite side. And for the same theta, this is the adjacent side, right? Okay, cool. So we know our opposite. We know, we know all of that. We know all of that. But take a look at this. We also know that these opposite is y. Why do we know that? Because this measurement, this one, happens to be the same here, which is the y coordinate, negative 2. Did you see? So this measurement is y. And for this one, this is the value of x. In this case, 2. But yeah, it doesn't really matter which point are we talking about. This is the measure for x. In other words, if we use SOCATOA, we know that the tangent of theta will be the opposite, which is y, over the adjacent, which is x, which is exactly what I have here. Tangent of theta equals y over x. Now, this gives us the tangent of the angle. But we don't want the tangent. We just want the angle. In other words, we need to delete, subtract, erase, move the word tan from there. We need to take it from there. We don't want that. 
How are we going to use that? Take a look at the red formula. By using the inverse tangent. This is how you read it, the inverse tangent. I don't know if you saw it anywhere else, maybe in mathematics in the previous year, or maybe in physics. I don't know. Is this new to you guys? Tell me in the chat, please. Is this something new, or have you worked with this in the past? No one? Con las normales, pero con las negativas no me acuerdo haber trabajado. All right, thank you, Alba. Thank you. I get it. Thank you, Hanka. Nobody else? All right, thank you, Lau. I see you are saying no. Thank you. All right, so if this is new, let me explain it. Uh, voy a pasar un al español. Listo. ¿Qué significa esto de tan menos uno? Este tan menos uno es la inversa de la tangente. Como hay seis trigonométricas, seno, coseno, tangente, secante, secante, cotangente, seis trigonométricas, pues hay también seis inversas. Seno a la menos uno, coseno a la menos uno, tangente a la menos uno, secante a la menos uno, cosecante a la menos uno, cotangente a la menos uno. Las inversas. Esa es una forma de llamarlas. Uno la llama tangente a la menos uno, seno a la menos uno. Esa es una forma de ponerle el nombre. Otra forma es seno inverso, coseno inverso, tangente inverso. Secante inverso, si ¿sí ven lo que estoy haciendo, el menos uno hace las veces de el inverso. En este caso estamos usando el tangente inverso. Una tercera forma, la preferida para la mayoría de matemáticos, en algunos libros la ponen también, poniendo el, la palabrita arco antes de la trigonométrica. Por ejemplo, tangente a la menos uno se llamaría arco tangente, seno a la menos uno, arco seno, coseno a la menos uno, arco coseno. Vénlo cómo lo voy haciendo. Para las otras tres, arco secante, arco cosecante, arco cotangente. Es bastante fácil. Esos son solo nombres. Lo que nos interesa es qué hace la función. La función es bastante fácil. La función busca el ángulo. Tú le aplicas la función y lo que está dentro del paréntesis es la respuesta. Esto busca es el ángulo. Entonces, mira, aquí tenemos tangente de un ángulo es igual a una división. Si aplicas la tangente inversa a la división, te va a buscar ese el ángulo. Y es lo que estamos buscando. Es la forma para despejar ángulos. Entonces, cuando estés trabajando con seno de, a, seno de teta, ¿quieres despejar el seno? ¿Quieres despejar la teta? Perdón, pues, haces arco seno. Si estamos trabajando con coseno de teta, ¿quieres despejar teta? Pues, entonces, haces arco coseno. En este momento sería, el, sería cuando hago un chiste de trigonométricas, pero queda grabado, así que no hay chiste. <ríe> Ustedes se imaginan el chiste. <ríe> Um, all right, so this is the way we do it, right? We are going to use this little formula over here. That formula helps us, again, to isolate the angle. We are going to isolate the angle. But how do you use the formula? Pretty simple. Just replace the values. Remember, this is the x and this is the y, right? We have 2 for x and negative 2 for y. So just replace the values here. y, negative 2, x, 2. How did you put this in the calculator? Look, unfortunately, for this exercise, we do have to use calculator. There are some exercises where you can use the cell phone or some of that, or something like that. But there are some other cases where that doesn't really work unless you have a really powerful calculator in the cell phone, right? I'm going to show you my calculator, my Texas calculator here. There it is. This is my Texas calculator, right? Here. This is how you use this calculator to put tangent inverse, the inverse tangent. Take a look at these keys over here. Look, there is the sine key, the cosine t key, and the tangent key. And right on top, right on top of the tangent, you can find tangent to the negative one, right? All you have to do is do second and then tangent. Let's do that. Second tangent. There it is, tangent inverse. There it is, is the inverse tangent. Inside of that, we're going to write down the number. So we have negative 2 divided by 2, and then close the parentheses. If I press Enter, I am going to have this decimal. Is that the same number that you got, yes or no? All right, now I got the same number. Anybody else? Marino, Castro, did you get the same number or not? 
Nico, did you get the same number? Did you have your calculator with you, Nico? Yes, go get it. Beautiful, brother. Guys, did you get this same number or not? All right. Well, this is the answer in radians. Now, I am not a big fan of radians. I am going to be honest with you. I don't like radians. I like degrees. In fact, I have my answer here as degrees. I know this is negative 45 degrees. But how can you find that answer in your calculator? Pretty simple. All you have to do is tell the calculator to tell to give the answer in degrees. If we press sec, I'm sorry, if we press mode, look at that. Every single piece of configuration, right? I'm just gonna go down here where it says radian, down, down to radians, right? And then step on degrees press enter and now the answers will be given in degrees right look of course this answer is already in radians i have to do the process again if i want it in degrees let me just write it again second tangent right uh negative two divided by two close the parentheses enter look at that negative 45 degrees all right so now we have the answer in degrees. Again, you can use any of these two, either radians or degrees. Now, I like degrees. That is what I like. I am doing all of these examples in degrees. So this is why I choose to do it in degrees. If you choose to do it in radians, that is okay as well. And look at that. Remember at the beginning, we said that the angle was going to be negative because I was saying this little piece. And look at that. We have a negative answer here, negative 45. Look at that. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? Cool. Now, right now, some of you might be thinking, all right, so all I have to do is remember, those, remember two formulas and replace. Pretty simple. No. You have to plot the point first. Why? Here is an example. Ah, by the way, this is how you write the answer, right? Uh, the first for the radius and then the second for the angle. Two square root of two, comma, negative 45. You could also have said, this is 2.8 comma negative 45 degrees. Both are correct. Remember, you can round this, right? Both are correct. But take a look at this example. Negative 1 comma negative square root of 3. As usual, the first uh, step is to plot the point. This is me plotting the point. Here, for x, we have negative 1. For y, we have negative square root of three. Now, some of you might be thinking, but teacher, how did you plot that? That point contains a root. How, how are you gonna put that in the plane? Well, that's pretty simple. Pass the root to a decimal. Just, just take the calculator and pass the, the root to a decimal. With the decimal, now you can see where it is. It is pretty simple. All right. Before, guys, before you use your calculator, please, before you use your calculator, I want to see how are your skills in guessing, estimating. Please, write down in the chat the answer for theta. Don't use the calculator. Just guess. Tell me, how much do you think, how much do you think is theta? You can say, I don't know, I'm a teacher, I have no idea. I think theta is, I think theta is 60 degrees. 100, 200, 700 degrees, whatever you feel like. Estimate the value of theta. Estimation, an estimation can be wrong. It is okay, right? Don't be ashamed of making a wrong estimation. Just give it your best. <clears throat> Try to be as close as possible. It doesn't really matter if you're wrong. It doesn't matter. All right, we have seven answers now. <clears throat> we want more. We want more, please. As usual, try to don't look at other people's answer. Otherwise, you're not going to understand and you're not going to learn anything. Give it a try. Man, if you're wrong, that's okay. I'm not going to read the answers, all right? I am not going to read the answers. All right, we have 12 people answering now. We, have, we need more, right? There are 25 people in the chat. So we need more answers here. We need more answers. I am not going to give you extra points if you have it correctly. I am not going to take points from you if you have it wrong. 
It's okay to make mistakes. Give it your try, give it your best. Beautiful, 20 people. Can we make the at least the last 23 people? Can we make at least the other 23? Thank you, Nico. Thank you, Cesar. Anybody else? No? 23 people. All right. We were able to do 23 people. Cool. All right. Let's continue from here. All right. So let me take a look at the answers. Most of you are saying the answer is, all right, we have a lot of different answers today. All right. We have 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 200, uh, 100. Uh, negatives. We have some negative answers over here. We have a lot of answers. All right. I can see that most of you, most of you are saying the answer is around 200, 200 something, right? I can see most of you are thinking, most of you are saying the answer is bigger than 200, but, but I don't see more than 250. So maybe between 200 and 250, right? Maybe. Okay, cool, cool. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. How did you estimate? It's pretty simple, actually. Take a look at what you knew from the beginning. This is 90 degrees, right? This is 90. And our angle is bigger than that. Look at that. We can see the angle is a lot bigger than that. So it's not 90, right? It's not 90. How about this? Take a look at this one. This is 180. But again, our angle is just a little bit more than 180. Look at that. So we know it's bigger than 180, right? We know that. We know that. Right, guys? Take a look at this. How much is this angle? How much is this angle here? Okay, that angle is 270, right? That is 270, 270. And our angle, the one we are looking for is lower. It doesn't reach to this point. It is missing this little part, right? So we know, we know is lower than 250. In other words, when you say your angle is around 200, 230, 240. That is a good estimation. That is a good estimation. I don't really know how much the angle is, but this one is a good estimation. It's bigger than 180, bigger by this part. It's smaller than 270, smaller by this part, right? So it is a good estimation. You guys are estimating properly. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, you could also have done this like. Mr. Alba, you could have taken the angle in a, in a negative way, like this. And that is okay. You could have done that as well. Then the angle is lower than 90, negative, right? So what? Negative 100, maybe. Negative 130, negative 150, right? Something like that. We know it's not, it's not lower than 180 negative, this one. Right? All right. That is just an approximation. That is just an approximation. Now that we have in our minds, now that we have in our minds an approximation, now let's jump into the real answer. As usual, to find the distance r, all we have to do is use the, the formula for r, the distance formula. This distance works for every single point. Just plot the x and the y. Boop. That's it. Negative 1 is the value of x. Negative square root of 3 is the value of y. If we plot it, if we put this in the calculator, we have that the answer is square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So now we know that r equals 2. OK, cool. Pretty good. Pretty good. r equals 2. How about theta? How about theta? Again, remember, theta was around 200 something, right? But we need to know precisely how much that is, precisely. To do precise, to do precision, we use the formula. This is the formula, the one in red, remember? Same formula. Simply replace the values of y and x like this. 
the value for y is negative root of 3. Under, under that, we have negative 1. Put this in the calculator and tell me, guys, please, in the chat, how much do you get? Syntax error. Uh, write it properly, then. <laughs> Maybe don't use the, the minus, use the negative. Take a look at the tangent. Maybe that's an issue, too, the tangent. Okay, we have now we have some people answering. All right, all right. We have some people answering. Okay, give it a try, please, guys. Give it a try. Don't be lazy. Take out your calculators and give it a try. Write in the chat. It's just that. That's, that's the question. Just write in the chat. All right. Let's continue with this. You guys are saying the answer is 60 degrees. Cool. 60 degrees. But wait, wait a minute. 60 degrees? We were estimating this to be bigger than 200. What? Why is the calculator giving me 60 degrees? 60, 60 degrees is lower than 90. This, this is for an angle over here in this, in this uh, quarter of the plane, in this quadrant. So what's going on? Well, that is clearly a mistake. That is a mistake, right? That is a mistake. What is the mistake here? It's simple to solve. This, the mistake is simple to solve, but hard to explain. Turns out, guys, that when we are talking about tangent and sine and cosine that are inverse, when we talk about these inverse functions to the negative one, those functions are not perfect. By law, those functions are not perfect. Those functions come with mistakes. And the easiest way to solve that mistake is to add a correction. The correction is 180. If we add 180 degrees to the solution, then we have the right answer. Take a look at this. This is how you do it. This is the new formula for quadrant three. Simply put this in the calculator, but with the correction, again, with the correction, put this in the calculator, and you're going to get that the answer is 180 degrees plus 60 degrees. Right? The real answer, 240. That is the real answer now, 240 degrees. 240 degrees, which is the angle that we were expecting, 240 degrees. All right? All right. All right, cool. Take a look at these guys. Again, we have the R, we have the theta. How do you write the answer? Like this. Take a look at these guys. Let me just do it this from zero. Why is it that we have to add 180? Take a look at this. 60 degrees will be around here. This is 60 degrees. And as you can see, as you can see, it is opposite to our point. This is opposite. So the correction of 180 comes from having to add from this line to this one. How much do you add to 60 to become the full circle, the full angle? Well, you add this part in here, and that part is exactly 180. So that is the reason why the correction is adding 180 degrees. That is the reason. Now, take a look at this. That correction happens for some angles, and for some others, the correction doesn't happen. These are the formulas per quadrant. Take a look at this. If the point is in quadrant 1, then these are the formulas. The distance is the same. The theta is without correction. Look at that. That is the formula for theta. Without the correction. Without adding anything. That is only for quadrant one, when the point is in the first quadrant, which is why it is important to plot the point first. If you don't plot the point first, but jump into the formulas, there might be a mistake. So you need to plot the point first. 
What happens when the point is in quadrant two here? A point e anywhere in this quadrant, anywhere in this quadrant. Here are the formulas. Look at that. The distance is the same. Same formula for distance. But the angle theta has a correction. You need to add 180 to the angle. You have to. Well, you don't have to. You need to. What happens when the angle is in quadrant 3? The angle, sorry, the point. The point is in quadrant 3. Okay, well, in this, the same formula for the distance, and again, a correction for the angle. So we have corrections in quadrants 2 and quadrants 3. That is simply because the angle is too big. The angle is too big. When the angle is too big, we have to add a correction, 180. But what happened in quadrant 4? Look at that. The angle here is negative. For quadrant 4, when the point is in quadrant 4, we can see the angle as a huge one or maybe a small one, but negative. If we look at it as a small angle, but negative, there is no need to make a correction. Corrections come from angles that are really big. So, quadrants 2 and quadrants 3, if the point is in anywhere in these two points, in these two quadrants, we have to make a correction. If it is not in those quadrants, so quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, no correction needed. No correction needed. Guys, if you are the one, if you are the type of writing notes, go ahead and write this down. Otherwise, take a screenshot. <laughs> Last longer, right? Take a screenshot. It's right there. You can look at the screenshot anytime you want. You don't know how to take a screenshot. Just take a picture with your cell phone. <laughs> Point it at the screen and take a picture. <laughs> right? These are the formulas. These formulas are going to work for every single point. Now, we're going to jump into exercises, but we're not going to do the exercises right now, are we? No, 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 because it is exactly 12.30, 12.31 uh, for my clock. Uh, so, guys, thank you for coming at this first half. Thank you for coming to this first half of the class. Uh, go, please, stop doing what you're doing. Don't do more exercises. Don't take more notes. Please leave the meeting. Go grab something to eat, and we will meet again at 1.30. Guys, since this is a two-part class, I have, I have to, I have to take assistance again. I was told uh, to do this by Miss Patty Jaramillo. I have to do it. I have to do it. All right? Guys, come on time, please. 1.30. We'll see you again. Bye-bye, guys. We'll see. We'll see again in 1.30, all right? Bye-bye. We'll see you again at 1.30. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. We'll see you again at 1.30, all right? Don't forget, 1.30. 1.30. Ciao.